Imagine it's 2 p.m. You haven't eaten since last night, and you suddenly notice your heartbeat and think, is intermittent fasting stressing my heart? <laughs> your heart will still beat about 100,000 times today, pushing blood through roughly 60,000 miles of vessels, whether you eat breakfast or not, but that doesn't stop the worry from feeling real. The reason you feel that pressure is because most of us were taught the heart needs steady sugar, so skipping meals must mean it's running on empty. In reality, your heart usually runs mostly on fat even when food is available, so when you delay eating, it doesn't starve, it adjusts the mix and may start using more ketones as the fast goes on. And that's the big question. Is that shift helpful, harmful, or just neutral for long-term heart health? Because the answer depends on what's happening inside your metabolism, not just what's on your plate. Most heart strain doesn't feel dramatic at first. It builds quietly, one metabolic shift at a time. Cardiologists call this metabolic inflexibility, when your heart struggles to switch fuel smoothly. It's like an engine that still runs but burns dirtier and wears down faster. You might notice palpitations, lightheadedness, or that wired but tired feeling during a fast. In the next few days, I'll show you what changes hour by hour and what can make fasting safer, smoother, and potentially beneficial. Start with the fear nobody wants to say out loud. If I skip meals, am I messing with my heart? Your heart is working right now, and it'll beat roughly 100,000 times today whether you eat breakfast or you accidentally do a 14-hour fast because life happened. The panic feels logical because we were taught the heart runs on constant sugar, like a phone battery that hits 2% and starts begging for a charger. But your heart is more like a hybrid engine. In humans, a big share of cardiac energy comes from oxidizing fatty acids, often described around the till the 60 to 90 percent range, even when food is available. Hour zero to four after your last meal, nothing snaps. Glucose is circulating and insulin is higher, sure, but your heart is still mainly running its usual program. Think of it like topping off your gas tank. Nice to have, not an emergency rescue. In real life, this is when you might feel that post-meal slump. Your heart doesn't slump, it keeps punching the clock. Value. Delaying the next meal doesn't instantly put your heart in danger, it just changes what's flowing past it. Hour 6 to 12, the body quietly changes gears. Insulin trends down, fat cells release more fatty acids into the bloodstream, and the heart, already fluent in fat, simply uses more of what's available. Researchers literally describe the heart as a metabolic omnivore, meaning it can swap fuels based on supply instead of getting stuck on one setting. During fasting, fat oxidation rises while glucose use drops. Real life. Your stomach may act like a toddler in a checkout line, but your heart is basically a calm manager, saying, we've got inventory in the back. Value. Hunger is loud. Heart metabolism is quietly competent. Hour 12 to 24, ketones become part of the story. Your liver converts more fat into ketone bodies, especially beta-hydroxybutyrate, and your heart can burn them as another fuel source. Ketones also act like biochemical memos, signaling molecules that researchers study for how they may influence metabolism and stress pathways in cardiovascular disease. If fatty acids are the main power grid, ketones are the clean backup generator that kicks on when the schedule changes. Value, fasting doesn't turn off your heart, it expands the fuel menu. Day one to two, this is where people misread symptoms. If you're underslept, overcaffeinated, underhydrated, and you fast by forgetting water, you might feel shaky or notice your heart beat more. That doesn't automatically mean your heart is failing. It can mean your nervous system is cranky and your electrolytes are lower because you're not eating your normal salt and minerals. Electrolytes are basically your heart's Wi-Fi. When the signal is weak, everything feels glitchy. Value, the best fasting plan isn't the most extreme. It's the one that doesn't turn you into a dizzy, irritable emoji. Weeks of intermittent fasting, especially time-restricted eating, show up if they show up. And they're usually not mystical, they're practical. Fewer late-night snacks, less grazing, more predictable meals. 
Across randomized trials and meta-analyses, time-restricted eating is often linked with modest weight loss and, in many studies, improvements in at least some cardiometabolic markers, like blood pressure and lipids. But results vary a lot depending on the eating window, baseline health, and what people actually eat inside the window. Value. Timing can be a helpful structure, but it doesn't cancel out diet quality. Here's the cardiology plot twist that keeps scientists interested. Failing hearts appear to increase ketone use. A 2016 circulation study reported that hypertrophied and failing hearts shift toward ketone bodies as a significant fuel source for oxidative energy production. And later reviews, including in Nature Reviews, Cardiology and Trends in Endocrinology and Metabolism, describe accumulating evidence that ketone utilization increases in heart failure in both animal models and humans. This does not mean fasting treats heart disease please, don't DIY your cardiologists, but it does prove ketone metabolism is real heart biology, not a wellness fad. Value the fuel shift is medically relevant, which is exactly why researchers are careful with the claims. And yes, we have to talk about the headline that freaked everyone out. In 2024, an AHA-reported analysis using NHANES diet recalls linked eating within less than 8 hours slash day with higher cardiovascular death risk, an association not proof of cause. And a JHA report summarized similar findings from that data set. The limitations matter. Self-reported eating patterns, confounding lifestyle factors, and the possibility that some people choose strict windows because they're already dealing with health problems value, shorter isn't automatically better and one window size is not a universal prescription. So if you want a heart-friendly way to try this, start boring a 10 to 12 hour eating window, still add structure without turning dinner plans into a crisis. Hydrate, sleep, and don't stack fasting on top of three hours of rest and six coffees, because then you're not biohacking, you're just bullying your nervous system. And if you ever get chest pressure, fainting, severe dizziness, or persistent racing beats, stop and get medical advice, especially if you have heart disease or take medications. Value, the goal is a calmer metabolism your heart can live with, not a fasting trophy. So that's what happens to your heart when you do intermittent fasting. It doesn't run out of fuel. It shifts fuel sources and keeps the rhythm steady. For many healthy people, that shift can support better metabolic flexibility and lower the constant snack and spike cycle. If you want the benefits, start simple. Try a 12-hour overnight fast before you chase a tight eating window. Hydrate, sleep, and eat real meals when the window opens because fasting can't outwork junk food. And don't confuse caffeine jitters and dehydration for heart damage. If you have heart disease, diabetes, or take medications, talk to your clinician before changing meal timing. This isn't a hunger contest. It's a smart experiment. Try one fasting schedule for seven days, then tell me in the comments what your heart and energy felt like. And if you want to follow up on what happens to your brain during fasting, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.